Greetings everybody and welcome to a slightly different video. We are doing a bus tier list. Or at least, you know, for the buses that I've rode on. But I'll get more into that in a second. Just want to get a few things out of the way. Um, yes, I am aware Crossrail is opening in a few days. No, I am not attending it. Mainly because I don't want to be swarmed by a whole bunch of kids. Maybe in a few weeks time when it's, you know, obviously died down. Then I'll give it a sample and see how crap it is. But, you know, um, I hope you do enjoy. Hope you also get stuck in a signal failure if you are attending it. That's pretty much all I've got to say uh, regarding Crosswell. So, the reason I'm doing this video is to basically gag all the kids who keep pestering me about, Oh, can you make more uh, bus railway reviews? And No, 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 no. I'm fed up. Though I, the one I did for the streetlight was a nice little gift. A nice little April Fool's joke, okay? So, I'm making this video to basically get my opinions on a whole bunch of buses that I've rode on and um, basically, yeah, shut you up about it. If I do ride on any bus um, that isn't being put on this list, then I might, like, you know, add it to a pinned comment of some extra opinions and stuff whatsoever. So the rules um, for this list are very simple. If I haven't been on the bus for more than three years and can't really remember it, then it doesn't go on the list. It's pretty simple. And whole bunch of buses both um for the sake of variety i've got both uk and dutch buses like you know if they run in the netherlands and or if they run in the uk you know just to keep things varied i also promise to at least have one bus in the goat tier they won't all be dutch buses so there you go hope you're happy about that and um also yeah i'm not a driver i should also uh, make that clear i'm re i'm ranking these from my own experience uh, oh yeah there's a couple of coaches in here as well because why not i think that makes a lot of sense because you know i'm not gonna make another video for coaches when i've only been on a handful okay so um let's begin with an easy one i'll also put the image um well closer bigger on screen here on post editing so just in case you can't see them and there's not just two rows there's actually five yeah, there's five roads, you just can't see them here because I've zoomed in the monitor a bit on the recording. So, ALX 400. Um, they're quite old now, aren't they? They're much older than I thought they would be. Well, I've been riding on them all my life, pretty much. Whilst the ALX 200 and 300 are practically extinct, the uh, ALX 400 is pretty common, if you must, if I must say. Uh, they're, all, they're everywhere except London. Uh, I can think of, because Kent... Um, yeah, there's Kent, uh, Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Essex, Birmingham. There's quite a handful of them in Birmingham. The North. You'll see them everywhere, almost. That isn't London. And, um, uh, I like them, honestly. I like them. But I don't know if I can call them top tier. Definitely high tier. You know what? High, I'm going to put it high tier. Yeah, I like these buses, honestly. I've been on both the... Well... I'll say both implies two, sorry. I've been on the Trident, Volvos, and the DAF version. The DAF version felt like it was falling apart, but all the other ones were pretty good. No real opinions uh, on, like, the different versions in between. Like, they all could be, like, right. I mean, if it was purely the DAF, maybe here, maybe. But high tier, I can get away with all of them in total. I like these ALX 400s. I like how they look like how they sound seats are all right and uh yeah just overall quite smooth and nice buses to ride on uh i'm not gonna do it all completely in order just for variety in fact let's just get one of the obvious ones out of the way street light shadow realm no questions asked um no debate there you go now moving on um let's do this the burkhoff uh ambassador or vdl ambassador if you prefer this bus runs in the Netherlands, and it's basically the equivalent there of the Plaxton Pointer, because <laughs> it's quite old-ish, but you'll see them quite off, quite a lot, um, or in like smaller services, um, be, unless they're being replaced by the VDL Citea. But I honestly think they're okay. I like them, but I wouldn't say like they're amazing. I do like the seats in the front because you can get a good view whilst you're sitting on front. Yeah, I mean seats are fine. They got good displays. Ride is nice. Engine sounds are also nice, but you know nothing too spectacular. So we can put them on a solid mid tier. Nothing like amazing about them, but nothing bad either, which is good. 
I, mean, I don't retch every time I see one, so that's already a good sign. Um, let's pick another one out of order, should I? No, nah, okay, I'll stick with being in order. Um, the Katano... Oh, hang on, I have the names of the buses to my right-hand side, just in case I forget them. The Katano E-City Golds. I am... Uh, I am not a fan of this um, bus. You see, they've introduced them on the... In London, specifically, at least, on the C-10 and P-5 bus routes, which are fun bus routes to ride on. I really, really love riding them. Just lying, I hate riding both. Uh, yeah, the reason I don't like them that much is that, well, the seats are... Eh, okay, they're not great, but they're not terrible. They only have about six seats on the low floor area of the bus, which means if there's, like, people with shopping, they're gonna be fighting with elderly people, and they're gonna be fighting with kids with children. Uh, what's it? What are kids with children? <laughs> I meant parents with children. Oh my god, goodness, this is what happens when I do things in one... Go. Also, I really don't like how both the front doors and the rear doors make an alarm as if them before they close, as if it's some sort of mass idiot proofing. So I'm definitely putting this in low tier. Um, it's electric, which is good. And if they actually had a decent interior like the Enviro 200s or any other bus I can think of, it could be in mid tier. But too bad. No, low mo. Sorry, mate. Keitano Levant. Or Levante. I'm going to call it the Levante. And if people get upset, screw you. I like these coaches, honestly. The, these coaches are pretty much everywhere with National Express. And there's some with Flixbus and um, Megabus as well. I like these coaches a lot. I think they're pretty good coaches. They're quite comfortable. And the refinement is really well. They're really nice and smooth. I can actually sleep on this coach. As I have done once. The key word in that sentence is once. Now, there are different versions. There's uh, there's some triaxle ones. And then there's Scania and Volvo. To be honest, I can't work out the difference between them at all. Uh, so, honestly, I think this is worthy of high tier. Because I quite like them. Especially the newest ones. The Catano Levante 3. I really like those. They are so comfortable. So so nice to ride on. Aircon, uh, armrests, good quality of seats. Mm, very nice. In fact, if it was only just the Levante 3, I'd put it in top tier. But I haven't been on the Levante 1 and 1 for a while, so we'll put it high tier. But is nice. Uh, Katano Nimbus. Uh, I rode on these buses a lot when I was younger. These made up a lot of my childhood. Back in the days of Telling's Golden Miller and Travel London. Ooh. So, uh, I'm quite accustomed to these. Unfortunately, uh, well, well, here's the thing. I, I am so tempted to put it in mid-tier, but I can't. don't know if I should. Because all of these buses back in the day, well, they had Urban 90 seats. Uh, at least when I, all the ones I rode on. But... Uh, Later in the years, they didn't have Urban 90s. At least the ones I rode on didn't have. Oh, I'm sorry. If there was like a mid between mid tier and low tier, this would where this would go. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I should put it. <laughs> I managed to ride on one uh, for the last time. The last time I rode on one was with a Reaver back in Guildford before they ran away because they realised... Um, breaking news, you've got to pay for your fleet and uh, your employees. But, well, give me a second. Give me, let me get a coin. I'm going to flip a coin over this. Hang on, I've got a coin here. Give, give, give me a oh, Heads mid-tier, tails low-tier. Let's go. Heads. There you go. Alright then, mid-tier it is. Thank you, uh, coin flip. East Lanx Esteem. Um... There are many versions of this bus, the East Lancaster Steam, and I've only been on the Invera 200 version. There's the Scania versions, which I've been planning to ride on, but can't really do that in the moment due to financial difficulties. But, uh, um, it's just an Invera 200 underneath, and it feels like one. Uh, just, it just feels slightly different. Oh, yeah, only slightly different. So I'm just going to put this mid-tier again. Just because I've rode on them, but I'm just not... Uh, 
I, I'm not angry enough to put them in low tier. Basically that. Okay, so um, these ones are going to get me annoyed. So let's see if I remember. This is the Lowlander. ELC Lowlander. Um, uh, just want to get this up the way. ELC have a really great the bus design. The, really great bus design division. Um, as you can tell, I'm just thrilled by their bus design. Now, I quite liked the sound of the Lowlander. However, I rode on it on a school journey. It wasn't a school bus, per se. It was more of a school like an extra bus that runs during school time. And it just gets filled to the brim with school kids. Um, but I prefer the sound and the seats and the interior, at least fitting of it, to the... Um, uh, what's it called? The other one, the loin, the Malium loin. So I'll put in this in mid tier because of that. Loin, uh, yes, I know it looks the same. Just for the sake of discussion, this is a loin. Uh, just, just please don't, please don't we'll have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I rode on a loin on, um, what's it called? Where was I traveling to? Uh, I was in, I was traveling to Potter's Bar and it rode on the A1 and it was rattling like mad. It was. Oh, it was not a nice ride. I don't like the loin as much as the Lowlander, so low tier. Um, definitely felt old, really old. This is the Mammalium. Mammalium, Mammalium, whatever. Low tier, and the reason is... <laughs> okay, ignore it, pronunciation aside, I did not like the seats on the ones that I was riding on. And that's probably not fair because there's probably other ones that have been riding around in London which didn't have these really... The seats were high backed. It, these were the ones that were used by Ride Pegasus to the ones I rode on. Uh, there, I, I rode on one with Southdown PSV in Red Hill. And they had the same awful seats that were used with the Ride Pegasus versions which had seat belts and they were high back. And it was hard to have some give in the seat so did not really enjoy riding it that much. Okay, um, the Viking, ELC Viking. Now, bit of a fun fact, this is the only bus of the um, Lowlander, Loin, Viking, films, whatever, um, that I've been on both the original and the Mammalium update. So, but my opinion, yeah, so my opinion of them is so similar to them that I can only just, I'm just putting them together just for the sake of, just for the sake of it. I like them. I think I like it a little bit more than the Lowlander. Just because of the, the, the Viking that I rode on, the upstairs seats were just so nice. Uh, the Mammalium Viking that I rode on, that was with Sullivan Buses, had the sticky windows. And that's all you need to know. Which would normally put it to the Shadow Realm because it was annoying me. But I just like the normal Viking enough just to keep it in mid tier. Your realm treatment is saved. For now. In Vero 200. Okay, so. Um, all rise, everybody, to the bus that has pretty much defined the entirety of the United Kingdom. <laughs> you will... I mean, some people say, you know, the Root Master is iconic. Nah, this, this thing is iconic. You'll see this everywhere in the country. No matter where you go. Even if you arrive at Heathrow and you just catch a taxi, you will see one of these running the hotel hoppers. They're everywhere. Just, that's why I'm not even going to bother telling you where to find it. You probably have some in your own town anyway. And I feel like the only place this bus could deserve is mid-tier. Now, I have... I had people telling me that these buses rattle a lot. In fact, a lot of Invera buses would rattle. However, I've rode on this bus so much that I can't fully agree with you because my ears just chewed out the rattling. <laughs> like, like <that. laughs> I just found it hilarious. It was only one time a while ago when I forced myself to hear it rattle that I, I could just uh, say, yeah, 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 this is a rattly boy. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the Enviro 200 Electric. Uh, BYD one. Um, let's get this one out of the way. This is a quite interesting list. If we're talking about the ones that are used on the 360 bus route in London, it would go here, high tier, because they sound really nice, nice little interior. 
If we're talking about the ones that I use on the 507 and 521, they would go about here because the interior sucks. If we're talking about the other ones in between, it would go here. And that's, I think, it just cancels itself out. <laughs> I think it just cancels itself out because... <laughs> I really should have made like another, I should have made some extra tiers, but it's just hard. I can't really have like a mid-high and a mid-low. Uh, maybe I should have done that. Oh, whatever, because I feel like mid-tier is going to get quite busy. Uh. <laughs> oh dear, what have I done? Well, uh, on the plus side, uh, electric buses are cool. I think they're alright, yeah. Mid-tier. Mid to prove my point that I was laughing about earlier, the normal Invera 200 MMC, uh, which is basically an update to the other Invera 200, goes in mid-tier again. Although, again, this will probably be mid-low. Let's just say mid-low, because um, they have a start-stop engine, which just makes my eyes roll. Why not just make it hybrid? Uh, it feels like it's just like... Um, green piece bait to say look how much it's saving the energy when they could just make it hybrid and it would save even more energy but whatever okay so the next ones here are the Invero 300s and because some of them are different enough I feel like I can split them separately okay so let's just start with the old Invero 200 <laughs> Oh my goodness. Old Invero 300. My goodness. Okay, old Invero 300, if you ask me. I really like it. I'm putting it in a higher tier. I think it's underrated. It, it's also quite extinct at the moment. Well, endangered. Let's just call it an endangered bus. I really like these buses. I rode on one uh, in Cambridge out of sheer luck one day. And yeah, I like them. I think they look really nice. The seats are quite nice. Except at, like, um, completely at the back. Well, no, the, the, the penultimate row at the back, those seats are sort of... Meh, but everything else is quite nice. The interior layout is also pretty nice, but a bit weird, because I remember seeing one of the seats facing backwards right near uh, the front of the bus, which is quite odd, but whatever. So, I like this one. For the sake of discussion, this is the Man in Vero 300, and I do not like this one. The, I had a... Horrible experience riding on this in Kettering because the gears refused to change and it were to go up hills and I suffered an hour on it. Ugh, just yeah. I spit at the no thank you. Uh, the normal Invero 300s, the, the you know like the, the basic one, you probably have ridden on this. <laughs> Going mid tier again. <laughs> I hope I have enough space. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to be really resourceful. <laughs> uh, not really much to say about that. I, I, I think it's alright. Uh, I do... I prefer the Invero 300 to the longer Invero 200 MMC. But that's just me. Oh, we, oh crap! Yeah, there was a reason why. No, sorry, I just remembered. Um, towards the back of the Invero uh, 200, um, the seats are the, towards the back near the, near the rear wheel arch. They don't. They don't give you enough space for your legs, so you're, you. It's really aw It's really awkward. Hard to explain it, but that's one of the reasons why I didn't like the Enviro 200 MMC towards the rear. The long wheelbase ones, definitely. In fact, no. I think that just applies to all of them. Hmm. Ah, but whatever. Uh, then we have the Enviro 300 Scania, which also includes the uh, gas-powered ones, which are used in Reading all the time. I really like these. They sound really nice. Uh, interior is pretty good as well. And, you know, bonus points for CNG Master Race. I like. Yeah, I like it. So I can finish my sentence there. Invero 350H. The hybrid, basically, hybrid Invero 300. Top tier. I love those buses. They are, they sound so good. The seats weren't, un they weren't as good as they could have been, but... I really like how the interior of this bus is almost completely low floor, even towards the back, because the engine is to the side of the bus in a different uh, position. It sounds 
Oh, mm, I love that sound of that bus. I really do. I love those buses. Would ride again, but unfortunately they're all in Basildon, which is... Yeah, yeah pretty much. Okay, uh, let's do another bus out of order, just for some fun and variety. The new Route Master! It's the best bus of all, just kidding. <laughs> this, this is going to the Shadow Realm with the streetlight, and there's a very simple reason. Actually, no, what do I say? Not a no, that implies there's only one reason. There's multiple reasons this is going to the Shadow Realm. Feed them to the sharks, actually. Feed them to all the tiger sharks in the Pacific Ocean. When these buses were shipped, they didn't have windows, like opening windows. So, you would cook if the central... <laughs> I was about to say central heating. <laughs> I meant to say the air conditioning. If the air conditioning broke or it wasn't working and it was summer, you would melt because they didn't have opening windows. That's already a great start. Then they added opening windows and they're like mailbox slot opening windows, which is awful because if it rains, the rain will just easily come inside and onto the seat and dampen the seat, which is what you want. And if you brush against a tree, uh, the trees will quick scope you and dash even more rain onto you. And it's just, oh, why can't they design this bus well, why? Why? The only good thing about this is that it has two staircases and three doors, which they could be used for entrance and exit, and that's a great idea in somewhere like the Netherlands, where this that's actually quite common, but in the United Kingdom, well, at least London, um, this really does not work because it's basically the honor system, as TFL learned the hard way. <laughs> Because um, <laughs> uh, if any, if you want to know why the honor system really works or doesn't work, I should say, just go on the Croydon and Tram Link on the Docklands Light Railway, <laughs> where there are no ticket barriers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's all I've got to say regarding that. So yeah, you can't board on from any door. You can only board through the front door nowadays, um, and you melt uh, because the air conditioning is non-existent, and even with the opening windows. It's, awful because trees can quick scope you and rain can hard scope you Ugh, awful buses i would have rather tfl just kept a whole bunch of alx and plaxton's buses plaxton buses like plaxton presidents and alx 400s and just convert them to electric then put these not, they're not even good electric buses because yeah yeah i just reminded myself they're not even properly electric they're uh, it, uh, yeah, because the electric motor, yeah, they're electric power, but the, um, uh, what's it called? The engine is almost always on. The, the engine is on more than it's just running on electric power. And it's just, uh, it's not even a good hybrid. <laughs> if you want to see the concept of what this bus was going for done right, you look at the Enviro 400 ER, which, go figure, I've rode on. And that's, yeah, just sharp. Feed them to sharks. Do not like at all. So, in Vero 400. Um, hmm, this is an interesting one. Because uh, the normal Trident ones are okay. I like the Scania ones, especially the Stagecoach Gold ones. They, they have a really nice seat on them. I love the hybrid ones. Um, hmm. You know what? Yeah, I think this is worthy of a high tier bus. I don't hate riding on Enviro 400s. They're nice. I like them. Yeah. Um, I just wish more of them were hybrid. Because I really like the sound of the hybrid ones. Yeah, that's... Um, the interior of them is also okay enough. I haven't had a fit with them. I haven't seen any with Urban 90 seats. So, yeah. It's alright. This is the Enviro Electric. Uh, the, four, the Enviro 400 Electric ones. I've had a lot of people say that these are quite overrated. I don't agree. I don't think it's overrated, but I do like them, honestly. I think they're okay. Um, the only right major issue I could really bring up is towards the rear of the bus. You've got to be careful if, you, if you're a tall guy, because you will hit your head against the... <laughs> you'll hit your head against the roof, and I was kind of laughing when I saw that happening to someone, but then it happened to me when I was getting off my stop. <laughs> As if karma happened. <laughs> oh, that was quite funny. So, uh, where should it go? 
Interesting. I don't know. Um, I think... Because hmm, I don't think I like them as much as, like, the hybrid ones. But I don't... Yeah, I'll put it mid... I'll put it mid-tier. Just for the sake of it. Okay, so... Uh, the Invero 400 MMC, the Invero 400 sequel, pretty much. Okay, so I've been on the normal ones. Um, I'm not really fond of the stop start. Excuse me. I'm not fond of the stop start, but not for the reason you think. Not because, you know, I'm not one of those people who says stop start evil. No, it's more of a situation of... I remember seeing an Invero 400 and it said it was a hybrid. Like, someone in London that said were well, hybrid, but they weren't. They were just stop start. And I don't like that about it. It should be either hybrid or not. In fact, to be honest, they should only sell those hybrids as far as I'm concerned. If they really give a damn about saving the planet. But whatever, we'll, we'll gloss over that minor thing. Uh, I have not been on the Scania ones, um, the N250. I have been on the gas-powered Scania ones, but they did not have nice seats. But again, I like the idea of uh, uh, CMG buses at least. And I have been on the hybrid ones, which I really like. Uh, I think I can put this again in mid-tier. Uh, now, I just want to test. Can I put another one? Okay, good. I can put another one in mid-tier. Good. Just double-checking. Um, we'll save the the trolley bus here. We'll save that for a bit. This, you probably don't know what it is, and I don't blame you. In fact, there's no picture of it in Wikipedia, at least um, in the UK. So I've had to use my own image here. This is the Heuger Steed, which is a small electric bus, uh, which, to the day to be making this video, you can find running in Brighton. And, um, I think it was quite nice. It was okay, honestly. It was a nice, cute little bus. Like, worthy of mid-tier. The only real issue that I have is that the bell sound, you know, you know, the, the red thing you push. Just in case you were really thick and I had to explain that to you. <laughs> the bell sound reminded me of an old me. I'm going to play it to you guys now just so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, it reminds me of the WTF boom, and I just can't stop thinking about that. It's really annoying. Uh, well, other than that, yeah, it's a nice bus. Also, it made um, like a, a vis, a, like an audible sound whilst indicating from the outside, like a sort of bell sound. It was quite odd. I've never heard of that before outside of trucks. All right, I'm gonna skip again. Let's go with the. Um, what is this? The Iris, the the Iris R I2E. Now, there's only two of these running in London on the 108 bus route, and I was not a fan of it, really. Sorry. Again, electric bus, pretty nice idea. I liked how it looked from the front, not so much the rear. Uh, I just didn't really like the interior that much, or the seats. And the sound was pretty uninteresting, so... Uh, it's just a meh bus, pretty much. Can't hate it, so it can't go really that much lower than bottom tier. But it won't go. It's staying in low tier, at least. So there you go. Let's do the trolley bus. This is really annoying. Because the Hesh um, light trolley that I rode on in Arnhem, I like the idea of trolley buses. I think they're cool. Really. Um... And just for the concept alone, it should go into high tier. And if it had really nice seats, it would go top tier. Unfortunately, the seats are garbage. I have to put it here, sadly. It goes into mid tier. I'm really sorry about that. But I really do like the concept. I think it's really cool. Um, just the idea of like a Patara fusion of a tram and a bus. Trolley buses are pretty much. Yeah. So, really sorry about that. Maybe if you get better seats, I'll move you to high tier. But for the meantime, you're staying in mid tier. Yeah. Right, so next one is the Man Lion City. This one runs in the Netherlands. The picture of it here is the 15 meter long boy. Um, I really like these buses. I really do. I think they are worthy of high tier. They sound quite nice. I really love the 15 meter ones. I honestly think these buses deserve a chance in the UK. 
Also, petition to put these buses on the X-26 and make the X-26 run every 20 minutes, plus, plus, plus. Um, yeah, I really like them. They're just really nice. They got, they're really big, they got good capacity, and they have three doors. Uh, at least the one in that image has three doors, some of them only have two. Pretty nice buses. One thing I would say is that I rode on the CNG version in The Hague, and the colours for the bells were the wrong way around, and it really, really irked me throughout the whole journey. Let's get on to some Mercedes buses now. So, we'll start with the Sitaro. I'm a big fan of the Sitaro, okay? My friend knows that. Um, I really like them. Um, they're both running in the, uh, the Netherlands and... Well, well, Europe, I should say, but also UK. There are different versions of the Sitaro. There's the Bendy Bus version, um, which they've been running in London before they were vote kicked, and they're running in Brighton, and apparently they're getting vote kicked from there. Rip. I like the new version and the old version. There's also the slightly smaller Sitaro K, which I sort of don't like as much. Because they put them on routes that are really busy. Thank you, TFL. But, um, yeah, I quite like them. I really like them. One version that stands out was the Sitaro LE, low entry version. And it felt really odd because um, that was running, I was riding on that in Kronehen. And the interior was the same at the front of the bus. But after the rear set of doors, it's a higher up floor because the engine is vertical instead of... No, the engine is horizontal instead of vertical, and it felt weird to see sitting that high up at the back of a, of a Sitaro. But I like them. Now, the Eagle Eye viewers may notice, well, probably not because the resolution is garbage. Or, well, not the resolution, but just the, the screen size. But this is another Sitaro. This is the capacity version, which is, I'm going to show you a picture of it. It's an even longer Bendy bus. And whilst I like the Sitaro a lot, I love the capacity version. Mwah, mwah. Long buses. They are up to 21 meters long. They have four sets of doors. And uh, they even need another set of axles on the uh, rear portion. But I love riding them so much. The seats are still nice. You still get USB charging. Um, even at 50 miles an hour, they're quite smooth. Just, yeah, I like them. I love riding on them on the Arnet on the, um, in Schiphol. That's where I normally get my hotel. I'm, I'm in love with those buses so much. <laughs> Just, mm. You know what? I'm going to say something quite controversial. These buses deserve a chance in the UK. Not London, just the UK. Somewhere with nice long stretches of roads or nice... Like wide road, or like a busway, like especially a busway. So, um, Luton, Luton and Dunstable, Milton Keynes, and Cambridge. The like those areas there, I think, deserve a chance with these buses. Now, of course, people are gonna say, "Dude, are you gonna reverse that out of Cambridge bus station?" And I'm going, "Shh, shh, don't ask questions. We'll sort that out later, all right?" I think these buses, the capacity ones, deserve a chance. And speaking of Cambridge, I completely forgot to say. Um, I think I'm actually going to move uh, the Enviro 400 MMC to high tier because I just remembered about the triaxle Volvo B8L. I just remembered about that. I comp I'm sorry. I, I really like those ones. They're really nice and long. They're painted green, which is bad, obviously, because green is not a creative color, but everything else is pretty good about them. I completely forgot, so I must move it to high tier, so sorry about that. Okay, whilst we're on a roll of buses that I really like, this, which is the Mercedes uh, Intoro, not the Turismo Intoro. This is sort of above a bus, but below a coach. So, intercity bus, basically. They use these on the Netherlands on some hourly bus routes. I rode on this from Leerwarden to Alkmaar one day, and I'm just... I, I, I have to, I have to put this to go. I love that bus so much. They were so sublime to ride on. The engine sounds were quite nice. The comfort, the refinement. Mmm, lovely. And air conditioning. Thank you. Ah, 
Oh man, I, next time I go to the Netherlands, I'm riding on that. I have to. I just have to. So there you go, there's our first GOAT. Now, unfortunately, Mercedes were on a roll, but we have the van here, and... <laughs> um, just for the sake of discussion, the picture that I'm using is a triaxle cursed version, just to make you roll your eyes. But I've been on this both in the Netherlands and in the UK. Uh, I was going to put it in low tier. However, one day I was riding on one down an avenue, like a small little avenue in a housing estate. And we went over a speed bump, and that's why it's in bomb here. Because my, my spine is sort of uh, cracked in three places after that. Whilst we're on the topic of, like, vans, we'll just get the Melo Strata out of the way. I'm going to put this in low tier. I think it's slightly better than the van that it's based on. Because, well, this is just a van, okay? The Sprinter is just a van. This, they at least try to hide that it's a van. So it's got like a proper bus interior, it's got proper bus bells, it's got a low floor area, a wheelchair, a proper wheelchair ramp, all that stuff. They, you know, they try and make it feel a bit better than a bus, which means, you know, it's not in the bottom tier. I couldn't put it in the same tier. I think there's at least an attempt to make it better, which also means I think it's better than the streetlight. So there you go. So this is the MCV Evolution. Now, go figure, I've rode on a bunch of versions, so let me just list the ones I can think of, and I'll show images that I've taken as well, so I'm by myself. I've been on the VDL version, um, I've also been on the MAN version, uh, and the, let's see, the Enviro 200 ones, those are the ones I rode on quite a lot in the days of Metroline, the Mercedes OC5 blah blah blah, I can't remember the full number. And the Volvo B8 RLE one as well, with center bus. Now, I don't remember everything out of my opinion on the man version, so we'll ignore that. In Vero 200 version, would put it in mid-tier. The VDL version would also keep it in mid-tier. The B8 RLE version would put it in high-tier. And the Mercedes version would also put it in high-tier as well. That being said... <laughs> The, the one problem with this bus, and I'm going to keep it in mid-tier actually, I made my decision, it's going in mid-tier. The one problem is I pressed the bell and my ears were raped. And because the, the buzz, like the, the buzzer for the bell was right near like the, the seat, like the, like the roof. And it was so loud, just, ugh, no thank you. So I've sadly had to put it in mid-tier. If it weren't for that, I'd probably be in high-tier, but I'm afraid not. Okay, MCV Avora, the B8RLE Master Race. I like them. Uh, high tier, problem solved. Uh, that being said, I might as well also say that this also includes uh, the other B8RLE bus, which is the Eclipse 3. I know it's we're not going to get to the Eclipse for a moment, but we're just going to keep it here just for sake of... Um, simplicity because my opinion of it is largely the same i really like how high the, the back of the bus is the seats are also quite nice they sound quite nice a bit quiet so i prefer the sound of the older sort of volvo buses but they're quite nice i like them okay now we have the mcv evo seti which i think they supposed to make they mean evo city yeah. now a bus like this would normally just go into, like, mid-tier. However, oh, okay, I guess it's going in mid <laughs> I accidentally let go of my mouth. I'm going to put it in mid-tier, yeah. Now, the thing is, is that um, most of these are the hybrid ones that I've been on, at least. And, you know, that's alright, pretty cool. The problem that I had that made me reconsider if I should even put it in mid-tier or was going to put it in low-tier was one version that I rode on with london general had some horrible seats on the top deck and i don't know what they did the normal seats that i've been on were fine it's just i don't know what happened there were some really hard seats like hard back seats it's just i don't know i don't know what's going on man but yeah we'll stick it in mid-tier okay xl optair xl uh well um there's only one place this bus deserves there you go. <gasps> no! No! <laughs> Sorry about that. I have a mouse that has a, a back button very close to my thumb. 
and yeah okay let's continue where let's pretend that didn't happen okay let's just put it back in the list uh action okay excel uh well, there's only one place this boss deserves goat it is oh man i love me some excels just wow i love them <laughs> Uh, they are nice and comfy. They sound really nice. They are, well, getting on for more than 20 years old, but they don't feel too old. And even in the interior, at least. Um, there's three of them running today, in this day and age, with Safeguard in Guildford. If you want to ride on one yourself, just to experience them. They're quite nice. Um, I spoke to the driver one day, and he said, um... Well, he's done one of the ones he's done he's driving has done 500,000 miles still feels his tires a drum hasn't blown up hasn't caught fire yet um hasn't been stolen yeah he's nice boss Ugh. okay uh let's do another optair just out of order let's do a spectra um i love me some spectras unfortunately i i can't find any operators running them i want to ride it again I love how they sound, I love how old and rustic they feel, but in a good way. And it was one of the first low floor buses as well. Bonus ducks for that. I like them. Comfy, sound really nice. Huge nostalgia points. Pretty simple. Optair Metro City, uh... Excuse me. It's pretty much a replacement for the Versa. In fact, stuff that. We'll do the Versa first. I like the Versa. There we go. Um... Versa's got a really nice interior, sounds really nice with the Mercedes engine. Ventilation, I've heard people that these buses get quite hot. In fact, a lot of the other Optairs get quite hot, they say as well. I, I can be inclined to agree, but I haven't melted yet. I think it's just my terrible experiences on the these buses have sort of made me feel more grateful for the Versa and the, um, the Solo. But, yeah. I like them. Uh, same with the Metro City, although I don't like it as much. Uh, well, then again, I love the electric version. <laughs> I really like the electric ones that have been used by Arriva London in South Norwood. Oh, crap. I'm going to do another coin flip. Hold on. Heads high tier, tails mid tier. Let's go. All right, we're keeping it mid tier. Tails it is. Okay, there you go. Problem solved. Thank you, coin. Up tier metro decker, this is. Right. Yeah, um... Metro Decca. So, what was I going to say about this? It's another, it's another electric double decker bus. I think it's quite smooth, honestly. It's not that bad. I think it's worthy of high tier, because I haven't really had any horrible horror stories. Ventilation's pretty good, um, and it's an electric bus. It's got a good amount of seats on the low floor deck as well. Yeah, he's good. Nice boss. Next one, Optera Olympus or East Lanks Olympus or Darwin Olympus. Get ready for a shock. I'm putting this in top tier. And the reason, the only reason it's going in top tier is because on the top deck, the window gives such a good view. Really, it's a lovely view compared to other buses where the pillars are really thick or the window is really small. Ah, you get a great view, man. Excellent. Yeah, that's the only reason it goes in top tier. There you go. Also, I might as well say, I rode on this bus one day. With, it was a Scania-bodied one. And I opened the windows on the bottom deck and it did the same thing that happened in that stupid video I made. Yeah. East Lex. I was trying to do like the 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 Italian hand gesture, but you couldn't see it because I'm recording the audio only and I feel like an idiot. <laughs> oh, I've got a lot of editing to do. Okay, so Optair Solo. We'll do the normal Optair Solo first. I like me some solos. I know some people are going to say, Daniel, they're, they're all as bad as the Streetlight. I don't think so. I think they're better than the Streetlight. Much better. However, I do prefer the older ones to the newer ones, but only slightly. I'm going to put the newer Optair Solo, which uh, in this case, the Solo SR in mid-tier, but only just very slightly this would probably be mid high i like them though i like them both i really like the mercedes engine plus allison gearbox they sound so good yeah i really like them next one uh let's do a coach actually just to vary things up uh plexton elite i uh which for the purposes of discussion this also includes the plaxton panorama i like them i like them you know 
Uh, I think they got a really good view out, as the name Power Armor suggests. And in the case of the Elite Eye, I, I just have this bit of a fascination for buses. Or coaches, I should say. For coaches that are basically double-decker, but the entire CT is on the top deck. I think that's just cool. I don't know why. I know it's a bit inefficient in the case of, you know, it could have just been a normal double-decker. But, you know, I just... Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why, I can't, why I like that. Uh, in the case of the Panorama, where it is a, like a double-decker coach, again, I like them. I really like them a lot. They've got good seats, nice and comfortable. I can actually sleep on them. They sound quite nice. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, back to the Optair. Optair Tempo. I miss when London United had a bunch of these on the 203 and H37. Now they've been sent to the Shadow Realm. Um, not not the tearless Shadow Realm, just the metaphysical Shadow Realm I'm discussing about. Uh, but I think they're worthy of mid-tier. Nothing really special about them. Sounds or mm, seats were sort of... But they had a lot of space inside of them. So, there you go. I just realised... Oh no, it's cutting off my list. <laughs> it's cutting off my images at the bottom. I only just realised that right now. <laughs> okay, so your next ones are going to have to be a bit of a surprise if you weren't paying attention. Okay, so, Plaxton Centro. Now, if we're talking about them entirely, like all of them, like the, like the, the three main ones, the Volvo, VDL and man versions, at least those three ones I'm aware of, they would probably just go into mid-tier. However, I rode on one quite recently in Birmingham, which was run by Diamond, and this one in particular was converted to be electric. And I think that's an excellent idea. Instead of sending this bus to the scrap god, why not just convert it to electric? And I thought, oh man, that's a, yeah, that's a fantastic idea. And I was gonna put that in high tier. And then it had over 90 seats. <laughs> no, no, no. What have you done, man? You ruined it. <laughs> okay, I probably wouldn't put it low tier, but high mid tier. Because it's sort of, again, it balances itself out. Really annoyed by that. It's like the, it's like they were, you know, the accountants back at Diamonds, Birmingham, England, going like, Oi, Dave, uh, the budget doesn't allow for no seats. You what? Yeah, we can't put no seats in. Oh, man, we'll just take the seats. Don't matter. It's felt like that. <laughs> so, Plaxton Pointer. Um, this bus is basically uh, the call of the 2000s. If someone says they've never seen this bus before, then they're a liar. Just easily that. Okay, so where does uh, this go? I think mid-tier, honestly. They're all right. Some of the seats on some versions I've rode on, well, you always, there's obviously been over 90. That's over 90 seats are garbage. But, uh, you know, it's, I like the sound of the older ones. The newer ones sort of sound okay. Um, I'm fine with them. It's just, I'm not, I'm trying not to let nostalgia blind my opinion on them, even though it sort of did with the XL. But I like the XL. Uh, give me a second, sorry. There. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I'll, I'm still going to keep it mid-tier, just for the sake of it. Alright, um, let's do another one out of order. The right SRM. My least favourite bus of all. Yeah, because it's a crappier version of the Rootmaster, with the exception of the drivetrain, which is slightly better, if you ask me. But everything else is garbage. You melt because the windows are crap. And the air conditioning is crap. The comfort is meh. And yeah, just just awful. Don't do not do not like. And let's do another bus out of order. This is um, the Van Hall AGG 300 New. Really lovely name. And I'm putting this in goat tier. The reason is very very simple. Uh, do you remember in Top Gear where they put the Koenigsegg CCX in cool because it's terrifying? That's the same reason this is on the top of the list. Just look at it. Look at the picture I'm just showing you here. It's a bi-articulated bendy bus. It's a double bendy bus, man. <laughs> that is just... Wow. You sit in the back of this and... Uh, it's so scary. My first time riding on this... Um, 
it's so obscure just seeing it go around the corner and accelerating when the rear is still trying to navigate the corner <sighs> and the driver was uh, kind of curved the wheel a few times whilst driving so that didn't make me terrified at all uh, it's just um wow <laughs> I love it. I've got to ride on this next time I go to the Netherlands again. The route that I was riding them, it was in Utrecht. It was running between the station and the university, but I, I don't know if it's still running the same route. Hopefully it'll still be running when I have enough money to, to go back to Arnhem, but... Not Arnhem, I mean Utrecht. Sorry, silly me. Uh, yeah, I like that bus. It's terrifying, and I like it. Okay, next one we shall look at. Uh, Plaxton President. Uh, I've been on both the Volvo version and the Dennis Trident version, and I think mid-tier. It's, I mean, it's nice that some of them are still running, especially in Essex, even though I don't like going to Essex, specifically Southend. But, you know, it's, it's just nice. It's nice that it still hasn't been thrown away yet. Yeah, it's alright. They're alright. Okay, so Scania Omnideca. Uh, I think this is obviously a mid tier as well. Um, the Omnideca, I should say. Actually, I don't even know why I have a picture of the Omnideca and the Omni City <laughs> separate, because they're going to put it in the same tier. <laughs> I don't know why I separated them out. I thought I had something of different opinion of them, but the sound of them is the same. The interiors feel the same. Uh. The appearance is the only thing worth saying, and, you know, I think I prefer the Omni City just a little bit in terms of the appearance, but it's not enough to put in a separate tier. So, there you go. Now, the single-decker Omni City that we have here, which, for the sake of discussion, also encompasses the single-decker Omni Link. Oh, wait, no, hold on. The Omni... Yeah, okay. Uh, I got it confused. The Omni Link... And the single decker on the city. I really like these buses, but I don't know if I can put it in top tier. Definitely high tier though. I like them a lot. I was trying to say love, but I really like them. They sound really nice. I like the interior of how high back there was. I'm a, it's a bit of a shame I didn't get to get any more pictures of them when they were running on the TFL. I don't know why they got rid of them. Um, Metro bus at least in the TFL area. That's probably a reason why, but I like them honestly. I really like the engine sound. It's pretty much balls down to that. All right, I'm gonna speed through some of this now. I'm gonna get this bus here, the this cadet out of the way, and I've saved a joke for this, which I do not want to waste. So, right cadets, right endurance, Volvo merits to an extent, Urban Ranger, Crusader, Pathfinder, Access Flow Line. Liberator, Access Ultra Low, Renown, Electro City, Commander, and to an extent, the Fusion. They all look the same! How is anybody supposed to work out the difference? <laughs> Just from sight alone, with the exception of the Fusion. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Just, oh. Now, okay, yes, there are differences between them. Like, some of them have step entrances, some of them are low floor, you know. But from the perspective of, uh, y you know, just, like, putting them all in a line, there's almost no way, uh, no, like, an average person is going to tell the difference. At least with the Enviro 200 and the 200 MMC, it's night and day of which one is which. But with the Cadet and then the other ones, they're just... No, right, boss. What's up? Well, why is your does, does what you, why is your design division so garbage? <laughs> now I have been on both the cadet and the commander in recent years. Annoyingly, it's going in mid tier, which is getting bloated to hell. <laughs> oh crap! Uh, I don't want to put it in high tier. That's really annoying. Mm. What can I do? I don't hate them either. So. I Stuff it. Let's just put it in high in mid tier. Give me a second. Let me adjust the screen again. There we go. Screen has been adjusted again. Um, let's continue with the next ones. VDL Satea. I like the VDL Satea, which runs in the Netherlands. 
There have been a bunch of new ones which are electric, and they charge using electric little pantographs, which I think is cute. So they charge them up in the bus station as well, which is a great idea. Take notes in um, London. It's a great idea, so they don't have to like scramble the bus to the um, to the depot when it's at like five percent fuel. Interior is okay. Seats are all right. I really like the cute little smaller ones, the nine meter or so ones uh, that I remember riding in Limburg. And then there's the fourteen meter longer boys. I like those, but I haven't had a chance to ride on those long ones yet. Volvo eight eighty. Wait, no, eighty eight hundred. <laughs> <laughs> the Volvo 8800, sorry. Uh, I like these buses, high tier, definitely. No, actually no, top tier. Top tier, I'm going to put them in top tier. Much like the Mercedes Enturo, um, I really like the whole intercity bus thing. Um, I think they work really well. I ride on them almost all the time I go to the Netherlands. Because I have to ride it from Schiphol to Alpen on the Rhin, and then from Alpen to Gouda to get cheese for my mum, because I like cheese. And she likes cheese as well. Okay, next one is the Van Hall EX16, I think. I am putting this in bottom tier for a very good reason. Although very specific. I rode on this coach overnight from Victoria coach station to Paris Bercy. It was an awful experience. We had crying children. The seats weren't as comfortable as I expected them to be for an overnight coach. It had USB charging, but it was in between the seats and really hard to get in. And the toilets on this was the smallest I have ever been on in a public transportation vehicle. Oh, the Pacer toilet is small. The Class 755 toilet is small. No, no, no. Those are just vast chasms with stalactites compared to that just no 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 all my nope uh, do not want to ride again also whilst we're on coaches we'll get the last two coaches here the van hall tdx 27 astro mega i'm gonna put this hmm, where did i put the other one uh i'm gonna put this in high tier again with the uh, Plaxton Elite. I like them. The seats, oh, the seats on these were really... Actually, you know, I'm going to put it in, high, in top tier, actually. And that's because the seats were even more comfortable than the Plaxton Panorama ones. And I was having a nice rest in them. The only downside with those those ones compared to the um, Plaxton Elite and the Plaxton Panorama was that whilst I rode on it um, one day, well, actually, not that long ago, actually, less than a week ago, Whilst I rode on it, it was a nice ride. The charging points weren't working, so I don't know. Maybe someone stole the uh, the capacitors or something. Well, whatever, you know. Someone's always going to bound to steal something. And uh, the Mercedes Turismo coach, uh, not as good as the other ones, but I really like them. I like uh, definitely a higher tier coach right there. Really nice and comfy, nice and interior, um, nice and uh, refined. I like me that coach. Very simple. And I also like how it looks and sounds. I have not rode on it with the Oxford Airline because the Oxford Airline is charging £100,000 just to go one step outside of Oxford. So, nah, we'll ride on it. I'll ride on those ones in the future. Uh, Volvo 7900s. Uh, I like how the bus looks and sounds because it sounds very similar to the Gemini 2 hybrid but uh, I don't know can I dislike it I don't know something about my brain is saying I don't think it deserves like the higher tiers because uh, it, it changes gear really slow but that may be just hmm. I'm unsure uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt mid tier uh, I just sort of... I mean, the interior of them is okay. I mean, yeah, I think it qualifies for mid-tier. It's okay. It's okay enough, even though it's a hybrid. Right, let's get these ones out the way really quickly, as fast as I can. Gemini... Ugh, Gemini um, 1 is um, a mid-tier. Uh, well, 
yeah, Eclipse Gemini 1 is mid-tier, which for the sake of discussion also includes the Pulsar Gemini. I don't know, why am I, why am I pronouncing it two different ways? Gemini 2, I like the hybrid ones a lot. I think they sound excellent. The not hybrid ones are sort of, uh, but I'm going to put it in mid-tier as well. Gemini 3, I think... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the Gemini one in on high tier. There you go, problem solved. There, I'm gonna just just for variety. I'm gonna put that in high tier. These two in mid tier, and the street deck uh, we'll actually do after the last the last one. This is the right eclipse, which also includes the solar and the pulsar. And I think uh, mid tier again. Actually, no, I really like. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna take a step, step second to think. Sorry. Okay, I've had a thought. I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna put it in high tier. Um, there is a whole bunch of different versions. There's the pulsar and the solar. Um, I really like the right solar sound, at least. But the interiors of them just all feel sort of the same. It's just they. The only way I really def differentiate them is the sound. And last but certainly not least, before I pass out from exhaustion for talking this long, is the street deck. Now, this is going to be interesting. The normal street deck gives me PTSD of the street light because it sounds the same as it. The hybrid street deck, I like and would probably be worthy of mid tier, maybe high tier. I have not been on the fully electric one, the Electroliner. I have been on the Hydroliner, which I do like the sound of. And would probably put it in... Yeah. I'm gonna keep... Yeah. You know what, screw it! I'm gonna put it in higher tier because I can at least tolerate the sound of it a lot more as a hybrid or the um, um, hydrogen version. I have not been on the micro-hybrid one yet either. There you go, everybody! There's my tier list of the different bosses that I've been on. I hope that's clear enough for you and you'll never ever ask me to do a stupid Unicum bus video ever again. Now I need some rest before I fall asleep in the middle of the day. Thank you very much for watching and uh...